Hello, everyone, and welcome to our worship service this week. We're just wonderfully blessed to have you here with us, and we hope that these worship services are continuing to be a blessing to you and your family as you gather together to watch them in the comfort and safety of your own home. This week, once again, we are having more of a praise service format, so not only do we have Dennis, but we have Gail here with us this morning to join in, so we thank them again for being here to lead us in all of this music this morning. I want to remind you that this coming Thursday, May 21st, um, we are uh, having a community dinner, um, not like we normally do in the fellowship hall, no. This will be a drive-through, takeout-only meal. Uh, it begins at 5.30, and you'll simply pull into our parking lot, and we'll hand you a prepackaged, freshly prepared meal that you can take home with you and enjoy um, when you are able. It is completely first come, first serve. So when we're out of food, we're out of food. But we hope that many of you will take the opportunity to not only come yourselves, but share this information. We know a lot of folks used to come to our indoor meals who aren't necessarily members of St. Luke's. We hope we can reach out to them through these videos, um, through our website, through our sign out here. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing some of you um, in a very safe way. Um, we'll all be masked and gloved and... Um, we hope it'll be a good time. We're doing this as kind of a, a sign of hope that we are coming back to life and our communities are coming back to life and we are just looking forward to that blessed day when, when things will return to at least something resembling normal. Um, so we do look forward to seeing you this Thursday for our drive through takeout only community dinner. But now on to this worship service and we begin with several songs by Dennis and Gail.
next song is a version of Amazing Grace called Grace Like Rain. Bye. 
wonderful new song thank you very much I really like that a lot in this time where we certainly don't know what's going on from day to day and people are telling us all over the place what we need to get through all this it's nice to be reminded of the only thing we truly need which is that we need our Lord Jesus Christ in our life recognizing that need is why we are able to gather here and we gather today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen O oh Lord, today and every day we are reminded that we need your forgiveness. Hear our confession. We confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. Forgive us and renew us, dear Lord. Only you can forgive our sins. The Lord forgives, renews, and strengthens us. Amen. The good news this morning comes from the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John. Jesus said, If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them, and reveal myself to each of them. Here ends the good news. Jesus was not done talking last week. In fact, he won't be done talking for quite a while in the Gospel of John just now. He has a lot more to say to his disciples. And just as a reminder, remember, we're back in the Last Supper. We're back before Jesus is arrested and crucified and risen. And it's a long conversation that Jesus has. Um, if you look in the Gospel of John, we're in, we're in chapter 14. Jesus goes on all the way through chapter 17. And in, in fancy terms, we call this the farewell discourse. And what is happening in this is that Jesus is preparing his disciples, first of all, for what is to come next for Jesus. He's letting them know what awaits him, not only in these next couple of days, but also afterwards. But he's also talking about what will come next for the disciples themselves after Jesus has ascended to the Father. It's long. It's complicated. It's emotional. It's, it's a tough read, in all honesty. But it's also very simple. Because at its center... This whole farewell discourse is centered, pretty much like the whole of John's Gospel, it's all centered around love. Today's reading begins with love, and it ends with love. Jesus begins by saying, if you love me. And, and the intent of that is not like that's a, well, if you love me, I'm not sure. It's if you love me and you do. It's, it's, a, it's a certain statement. You do love Jesus. 
because you love Jesus, then you will keep his commandments. Plural. Commandments. Which is a funny thing. Because to prepare for this, I did something I, I don't normally do. I read through the whole Gospel of John. Because I wanted to count how many commandments Jesus has given his disciples in the Gospel of John. And I'm going to show you with my fingers how many there are. One. He really only gives one commandment. Now, if you were to drift over to Matthew, yeah, Jesus has given commands all the time. He's telling them, do this and do that and do some other thing. But in John, he gives one commandment. He gives it in chapter 13. Repeats it in chapter 15. And his commandment is this. That you love one another. In chapter 13, he says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. That's it. That's the whole of the commands that Jesus gives in the Gospel of John. Love one another. Well, knowing that, that might well beg the question then, how does Jesus love? If we are to love one another like Jesus loves us, how does Jesus love? And, well, you might begin by saying that Jesus loves unconditionally. You might talk about how Jesus loves in a way that welcomes the outsider, that welcomes the outcast and the stranger, a love that reaches out to the lowly and the weak and the poor and invites them in. You might talk about love in ways that involve humble service and a deep willingness to be self-giving and selfless in our relationships with one another. You might talk about how Jesus loves in a way that builds up. It raises up. It empowers. You might talk about how Jesus loves in a way that shows concern and sympathy and empathy. You might well talk about how Jesus loves everyone who comes to him. And frankly, everybody who doesn't, too. You might simply say that Jesus loves as God loves. And if you go back to John 3.16, we know that God loves the whole world. Truth is, there are a lot of ways that you could say that Jesus loves, how Jesus loves, which means that there are a lot of ways that we can love as well. But there's another way to describe this whole complicated understanding of how Jesus loves, and it's very basic, and it's very simple, and it involves one of my absolute favorite words in the Gospel of John. Now, we didn't actually hear it in the reading. We heard a translation of it. But I'm going to give you the word that is it's found the way John wrote it in Greek all those centuries ago. And the word is paraclete. It's a Greek word. It was, in, it was in verse 15 of the reading. I love that word, paraclete. I just love saying it. Paraclete. It's a great word. Jesus is going to ask the Father, and the Father will give us the paraclete. Now, it's a tough word to translate. And, and you can go through a bunch of different versions of the Bible, a bunch of different versions of the Gospel of John, and you will find different translations. Today, I think we heard advocate. But if you go back like, to the, the old, old translations, they'll say a comforter. Sometimes you could translate it as helper. Some, some folks translate it as counselor. And so that might ask, you know, well, then which one is correct? And the answer is yes. They all are, but they're all not exactly fully correct. It means all of those things and more. But I think when Jesus said it, and as John reports it, I think we're to hear it as all of those things, advocate, comforter, helper, counselor. But there's a simpler way to understand this word paraclete. It's not a literal translation, to be sure. 
but it's a way of thinking about it that expresses everything that those other words say and a whole lot more. And the way to understand paraclete is that a paraclete is someone who walks beside you. Isn't that great? One who walks beside you. You know who walks beside us all the time, in good times and bad times, through thick and thin, no matter what? One who truly loves us. When you truly love somebody, you walk beside them. When you truly love somebody, you walk beside them in all circumstances, through every situation. That's what love is, isn't it? Commitment. That promise to always be beside one another. Jesus says the Father will actually send us another paraclete. And that paraclete, Jesus tells us, will be the Holy Spirit. Now, if the Holy Spirit is another paraclete, well, then who was the first one? Jesus. Jesus is the first Paraclete. Jesus is the one who first walks beside us. And now, as Jesus ascends to the Father, the Spirit will be sent to be another one who walks beside us. Another way maybe to understand this is to say that with Jesus now ascended to the Father, the Spirit becomes the means by which Jesus continues to walk beside us. And I'm getting really deep into Trinity stuff here, and I don't want to. I don't want to get us bogged down in the how does all of this happen. I just want us to rejoice that Jesus and the Spirit now walk beside us. All the time. In every situation. In every single situation we will ever face or have ever faced. The promise is that we are not alone. We never have been alone, and we never will be alone. The promise of Jesus, the living out of this divine, eternal, unconditional love for each and every one of us, is that always and forever, Jesus will walk beside us. The Spirit will walk beside us. God will walk beside us, no matter what. So back to Jesus' command. If we are to love like Jesus loves, then one way that we do that is to walk beside one another in love. Or, to use that word I love so much, insofar as we love like Jesus, we are to become a paraclete to somebody else. We will become yet another paraclete we will become one who walks beside someone else. And you know, in this time of coronavirus, isn't that what we need? Don't we really need some folks to walk beside us? I mean, we face so many struggles, so many fears, and so many challenges in these trying and difficult and unusual days that to have someone walk beside us can be a real profound blessing. Someone along with Jesus who is beside us, walking our path with us, walking on our way with us, sharing our journey with us, being a friend or a companion, someone to laugh with, someone to cry with, someone to share a concern with, someone to share a joke with, someone to vent to, someone to just be with. So here's my question for all of you this week. Okay, really it's going to be a couple of questions, but it's the same question. Who are you a paraclete for today? Who are you walking beside today? And then the reverse of that. Who is your paraclete today? Who is the one who is walking beside you today through these times? We know Jesus is there. We know the Spirit is there. But who else? Who else is there with you and for you and beside you? And just as importantly, who needs you to be beside them right now? 
See, we all need a paraclete today. And we all need to be a paraclete today. We all need to walk beside someone else. And we all need someone else to walk besides us. When Jesus says to love one another as he has loved us, then one way he means that is for you and I to be paraclete. This is a time when we all need someone to share our life with. And this is a time when we all need to share someone's life with them. Because this is a time when what we need most of all is love. That love that is like Jesus' love. We all need to give love. And we all need to be given love. The good news today and every day is that God is with you. The divine paraclete is with you today and every day, walking beside you no matter what. But the challenge for us today, the challenge for us in these days and every day is to be a paraclete for someone else. Walk beside someone else today. And let someone else, ask someone else to walk beside you today. Love one another as Jesus loves you. Amen. As we're going to ask Dennis and Gail to come up now for the offering song, I just want to thank you once again for your support of the ministry of St. Luke's. Um, I want you to be thankful for all the ways that you are being blessed, for all the gifts that you are receiving from God, from one another, these gifts of love and friendship and support that we all receive every day. Be thankful in your hearts. Recognize the blessings that you have received. And in knowing that you have been blessed, please take time to be a blessing to someone else. If you'd like to support St. Luke's, we would welcome that gift. You may mail it to us. Um, you can find our address on our website. Um, you can also go to our website and make a safe, secure gift online. However you choose to support the ministry of St. Luke's, know we thank you and that we love you. And we love all of you whether you support us or not. Be blessed in Jesus' name. So as my paraclete comes back and joins me, uh, this, this is a new song for us. It's called Holy Spirit. It was introduced to us by our four-year-old grandson in Latrobe, who is hopefully going to watch the video uh, so that he knows we've actually done it. It's called Holy Spirit.
As we turn to God in prayer this morning, we want to remember the family and friends of Virginia Renninger. Um, Virginia was not only one of our oldest members here at St. Luke's, but also um, one of our longest tenured members here. Um, she was here a long time. Um, I, this week I spoke with another one of our longtime members um, who was slightly younger than Virginia, and she said she didn't remember a time Virginia wasn't here. Um, so Virginia died last weekend over Mother's Day weekend, and um, we just want to remember her. We're going to miss her very much. She was a real fixture at our 8 o'clock service, sat in the third row right there. And um, we're going to miss her a lot, and we just want to remember her family and friends this morning. Let us pray. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your church as your followers to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly, show mercy to the oppressed, and speak truth to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost, and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way, especially those who are currently suffering from COVID-19, those who are hospitalized, um, those who are at home and are sick. We pray your healing power to come upon all of them, to raise them up to health and new life. We also remember those who are at, at risk, to contract this disease, and we pray, Lord, that you would keep them safe and empower us all to do whatever we need to do to keep one another safe. We pray for those on the front lines, those who are in hospitals and nursing homes, those who are in stores and businesses, those of, who are first responders, everyone who needs to be at work. We pray that you would keep them safe and that you would wrap your protecting arms around all of them. We pray for those who worry, those who are struggling with doubt and uncertainty, those who are learning to do new things and live in new ways, those who are struggling to accept the changes that have come upon them in this time, those of us who are simply worried or afraid. Bring comfort to us all. Give us patience and courage and hope, for we know that you walk with us and that you walk beside us, and that you are our rock and that we are strong in your arms. So be with us and bring us through this time. We pray for all of our family and friends who are ill this day, all who are struggling in any way, that you may bring comfort and peace to their lives. We pray especially for the family and friends of Virginia Renninger. We pray that you would comfort them with the sure and certain promise of resurrection, one for us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises to work for justice, advocate for the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember all the saints who have gone before us, Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. 
May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now Dennis and Gail are back for our final song this morning. It is not a new song for them. Or any of us, probably. It is not a new song. It's an old faith. And it's called How Great Thou Art. Oh, 